This video is about performing stature lengthening for a patient who has significant short stature using intramedullary magnetic nails with minimal invasive technique. This patient fall outside the 10th centile of the bell curve for short stature compared to his normal age weight match. So the aim is to lengthen him between five and 10 centimeters. Looking at the EO scan, you can see the femurs and the tibias are proportionate. So we have to be careful to perform such kind of elective surgery, we don't create disproportionate figure. The aim is to maintain the portion as much as possible. When performing the surgery, we do one leg at a time, we scrub and regrade. re The patient is normally positioned supine with a slight tilt to the opposite side. Ideally, we put a sandbag under the lower back in order to achieve AT and lateral X-ray without changing the image intensifier position. The first step of this procedure, considering that the patient is significantly short, is to release the endothelial band. The endothelial band will be extremely tight as we lengthen. We perform this through a small incision at the proximal aspect. You can feel the tight band in the endothelial band right here. It's softer here up to there, right here is very hard. So we're just sliding down over it, under tension, releasing the fascia. You can feel the tension easing distally where it inserts. And now it's soft there, soft there, soft in the middle now too. Performing this is relatively safe as there is no neurovascular structures in this region. So we've estimated the end of the nail is going to be here. We're going to come up to at least 11 centimetres, around 15, 16 centimetre mark here. And that's in the area of the bone called the diaphysis. It's a narrower part of the bone and that provides better stability. We perform the femoral osteotomy through a one centimetre incision at the area that we mark using low energy drilling technique. And we're not completing the osteotomy at this point. We're simply creating a couple of drill holes to vent the femur because one of the problems can occur with reaming is a condition called fat embolism where fatty material can escape into the bloodstream and get filtered by the lungs. Most of the time that causes no problems but in a small number of cases can cause an inflammatory reaction which can be a problem for the patient. So that's the diathesis of the femur. As we grow, we vent the femur. At the same time, we use cold fluid irrigation to avoid any heat generation. Heat generation can prevent bone healing. After venting the femur, we move on to perform the nail insertion. We identify the entry point of the nail. We choose performance fossa entry. We use a guide wire that give us an indication where the performance fossa entry is on the AP plane. And then we do the same thing on the lateral. Using a two centimeter incision, we make an opening in the skin subclinus tissue and the deep fascia aimed at the piriformis fossa. We use a guide wire to identify the entry. This is the entry point. It's perfectly positioned in the center of the femur. The entry yeah. point looks very good on the lateral as well. We gently advance the guide wire into the femur and drive the wire using the wire driver into the canal. We double check the AP and the lateral use and the left central. As you can see, the whole procedure is done through very small incisions. The starter rima enters the canal. We exchange the starter wire and rima with the long flexible rima guide wire. Again, we check on the AP on the lateral view and it's in the bone in both positions. The next vital step of this procedure is to maintain the rotation. In order to prevent malrotation, we have to insert aiming pins that will maintain our alignment. We do this through a small incision. You can see the pin is inserted anterior to where our nail will go and it's inserted away on the AP view from our entry point of the nail. This pin is positioned horizontal and a second pin will be distal parallel to the first pin. It's very important that we get the alignment correct. We can see that these two pins are parallel and they're solidly fixed in the bone so they will not change. This is very essential point in performing this procedure so the patient will not end up with any rotational deformity. This is a remo, it's got an end cutting drill bit that helps to start at 8.5 and we slowly build it up. We sequentially weave the femur, knowing that we have vented the bone, minimize the chance of any kind of embolism, especially fat embolism, from occurring. The other benefit of venting the femur, as we ream, some of the bone graft will come out through these venting holes and add in enhancing the healing of the osteotomy cell. You can hear the chatter of the bone. We go with this process very slow, not to burn any bone.
We overream the canal by minimum 2 millimeters in order to facilitate the transition the nail inside the bone. We finish the reaming to the desired size of the reamer. We take the wire out. This is an intramedullary magnetic nail that has telescoping property where the nail grow using an external magnet. We pre-distract the nail to make sure that it's working using a fast distractor. Magnet in here and as we go along it'll find the magnet in the nail right there. And we're just ensuring that the mechanism is, is functioning. You can see here the nail is expanding. We satisfied that the nail gearbox is functioning. The nail is locked at the top and at the bottom. Screws that go across. This jig has drill guides built into it and we just need to ensure that they're lining up properly with the holes. The next step is insertion of the nail. We gently insert it proximal to the area where we want to achieve the osteotomy. We check it with the image intensifier. Normally we don't need to hammer the nail in. We just gradually push it with rotational force as we drive it. We advance the nail just above the drill hole site where we want to perform the osteotomy. We complete the osteotomy using an osteotome. Ideally the osteotomy should be done cold without any heat generation to maximize the chance of bone healing. Always double check with image intensifier. The position of the osteotome now is anterior, so we do anterior osteotomy first, gently and slowly. You can see the osteotome is advanced almost all the way and it's fixed in the femur. You can see the line of our osteotomy. You can feel that there is a give now and you can see the osteotomy is complete. I double check that all the parts are moving. And it is. I remove the osteotome and then we advance the nail in the canal. You can see the nail is advanced in the femoral canal and it's very important to see the benefit of this wire. Regardless of how good is the assistance, the femur tend to rotate. We are externally rotated by around 10 degrees, which we will correct. I would ignore the rotation at this stage. We lock the proximal screws and then we restore the rotation and then lock the distal screws. The two proximal screws are inserted with the aid of a drill guide. Care must be taken in the lower screw not to spy, especially the position of the guide is at the area where the proximal femur is curved. The proximal screws are well positioned. The next step of this operation is to restore the femoral rotation. We use the guide. So we restored the rotation now. It is advantageous to have an oblique osteotomy. This will encourage more surface area for bone to generate. We check the position of the osteotomy in the lateral view and it looks very good. Care must be taken that when we try to find the perfect circles of the distal locking screw not to rotate the female. On occasions when we have capacious femoral canals we supplement our fixation with locking screws. In this patient there is no need for that. Considering our osteotomy position is located in a perfect match of the intramedullary canal with the nail size. We leave the first drill while we're doing the second hole drilling. The benefit of leaving a drill number one is to help with rotational stability of the nail while we're drilling the hole and the second one is to give us a guidance for positioning the drill bit. We're satisfied with the position of the distal locking screws. We double check that the rotation is maintained and then remove the guide wires. We check the position of the nail and the shaft and it looks well positioned. We check the position on the lap hole. And it looks well positioned. In the old days, this procedure is to be performed using an external fixator frame like the Ilizar frame or the circular frame. While now, this procedure can be successfully performed with very small cuts on the skin and all intramedullary without any protruding implants from the skin. We can see the magnet on the x-ray. 
So we want to mark the location of the magnet, which is actually at the level of the osteotomy. The patient knows where, where the magnet is located and where to place the remote control that will lengthen the nail. This marks the position of the magnet within the nail and allows the patient to know where to place the external remote control for lengthening. Thank you very much.